wiring centers. I get a lot of requests on our FaceTime channel and installers that come here and the Sparkies come on Thursdays. Which wiring center do I use? Because they seem to be confused with uh, the good ones and the bad ones. So sometimes you get it in the box when you buy the whole kit, which is fine, but often not. So first of all, to make a, a, a fair uh, test, we're going to use just Honeywell and the S-Plan because that's the most popular one that we install in this day and age. But we're going to make it a little bit more interesting by adding uh, frost protection into it for those installations where the boiler's in an unheated area. And then we're going to convert into Smart as well. So we're still using the same basic unit. So here's a... A typical junction box from Honeywell this is the mark 2 larger than the other one and you can tell that because the live neutron earth are considerably larger than these whereas before it used to be the same size and that was a challenge so first of all um, they've all got to do uh, the same job so if we count the components that go in then we'll have a better idea of what's what we need so we've got one two three four five six seven eight eight components eight flexes have got to go into each of our wiring centers correctly and in some sort of orderly fashion so when we look at um, the honeywell one here which will probably be the market leader i would imagine um, so we can see here that on the live terminal uh, let's count up the live wires so we're going to need one here and one here so that's two but we also have a gray wire on each zone valve they have to go into terminal one so that's four wires that we need to go into one so we can do that that's not a problem at all um easy peasy and if you look in our our wiring book page 41 is exactly this but in color so it's much easier to follow which wire goes well so it clearly shows uh, live has got just four wires um, the next is neutral blue so therefore that's going to be a challenge because we've got neutral 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 so we've got one two three four five six seven neutrals have got to go into this second terminal uh, that's not going to happen it's physically impossible so what you can do is um, I, I would suggest two things you can either get a nice thick blue wire and take it from n to terminal nine terminal 10 is the boiler switch live yeah but nine is a spare one it's very handy so now you could put three or four blue ones here and three or four blue ones here that's one way to solve this problem and we do this here on our, our course uh, in that respect what you can also do is get this a little patras and mr honeywell if you remove the first one and the last one here exposes two holes which exactly correspond with a single patras so therefore we can put junction links into here bank them all up together and just take one out and put it into the second one blue neutral so we've only got two wires in here instead of six etc next one is earth again we've got earth 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 possibly an earth definitely earth earth so we've got another six or seven earths going into here same problem but now we've don't really want to link anything out we'll use a, a, a multi-plug in the back and just take out the one earth so we've got one from the spur and then one from the back here where they're all linked together safely and isolated and goes into terminal three Terminal 4 is heating on, so that'll take its demand from the programmer at the end, central heating on, and goes into here, and then we go in and out, in and out, in and out, until we get to 12, which is the boiler live or switch live, depending what the manufacturer has given us to actually fire up the boiler. So that's the challenge for this wiring centre, and um, it works it works um sold by the million i should think by the by the trillion um the only thing i'd like to draw attention to is the fact you don't get a drawing whereas other manufacturers they all provide some sort of piece of paper to say this terminal here this terminal there 
If you buy the box from Honeywell with all the components in, then there should be a leaflet inside it, um, or you've got to download it from the website, which is really not good enough. I would have thought every wiring centre should have its own wiring leaflet for Y plan and S plan, which includes maybe a few other bits and pieces, and uh, even from marketing uh, or, or um, you know, a phone number, email address, or website. If you've got problems, boom. Get in touch. This is the Wago L32 wiring center. So at first glance, it looks quite clever because what you've got here are a series of orange uh, strips. You simply lift up one flap, put the wire in, close the flap down, and then all of these are the same sort of voltage, as it were, or the same uh, source that comes into place. Um, the second thing I'm looking at, small. I don't understand this. this. It's got a big place, but there's lots of wasted areas here. Uh, the next thing I'm looking at is cord grips. Um, we've got eight flexes. You can't put eight flexes in here in a million years. You might, if you're lucky, to come out the back uh, into here and put a few in, but you know they're not supported, which is not quite right. So a um, few issues here, to say the least. Now. Um, if we look at the drawing for the S plan, first thing that I notice is that there are only three earths. So there's an earth from here, from the spur, earth from the boiler, earth from the pump. But where's the other earths? They suddenly dis they're not here at all. They just don't exist. Which I can't understand how they got this approved uh, because you're supposed to show each colour where it goes, which terminal, and they simply haven't done that. And if you look along here. Um, you know, it can't be done. You're going to have to have a slave wiring centre, which we've got here, uh, which is fine. It's not a problem. I don't have a problem with having one of these. This makes life a lot easier in that respect. But you can't mount it on here because it can't be. It's almost the same size. It's just a lot of wasted space. That's what I, the impression I get. What I've had to do is to buy another uh, box of from them, uh, and this has got a series of them. And if we look inside here, we've got two, three, and five terminals. To be honest, two is a waste of space because it's one in, one out. It's neither here nor there uh, in that respect. I would have thought four, five, and six would have been more like it. And as I said, for nearly £40, that's an expensive way of putting an adapter when uh, these little connector blocks are almost free. They're just at 50 pence or 30 pence for a whole strip, which will do the same job as those. Not as flashy, but it'll still do the same job. So if, you, if you're thinking of doing a Wago, you're going to need something, as I said, with our wiring book. So here on page 41 is our basic S plan, which is what we see here. Um, so you're going to be quite clever to join this up with that and with their wiring centre. Um, so on the back of their leaflet, it says for DIY people. I wouldn't trust the DIY person anywhere near controls, so why they should advertise that fact, I, I don't know. To do any of this, you're supposed to come on the course first, learn all the theory, and do some practicing, which is what we do here. So I wouldn't allow any DIY person anywhere near electrics in any shape or form. Um, no wonder we've got so many problems in that respect. So anyway, just to sum up, um, Yes, good idea, brilliant, just the, just the box is badly designed, um, it's going to be a challenge to say the least, so basically it's a thumbs down and maybe 1 out of 10 at the most. This is the Drayton Wiring Centre and at first glance looks lovely and big, uh, larger larger than the Honeywell one, which is, we like big. Big means easy and comfortable. If we look along the bottom, we've got all the cord grips here that we need because we've got eight flexes. So we, we've got nice uh, places to put. We've got our saddles and a couple of links. And uh, we also received some links across the top, depending whether you're doing Y plan or something else in that respect. So at first glance, we'll look at the connector blocks. Here on the bottom, we've got six earth. Then we've got six neutrals, which we love. One live goes to terminal 11, which is fine. But if we wanted to add, for example, our Frostat, um, it's going to be a tight squeeze. What I would suggest is that from 11, we take a link to one. 
and that allows us to put our external f uh, wires the live so live from there or there or if we move over here to smart we can use you know it needs a permanent live in neutral so there's a permanent live and i've got six neutrals here and i can piggyback because they're lovely and large so um this we like extremely uh drayton we've always enjoyed because uh they're good reliable no problems at all no issues in any shape if we look on the um the back everything is clearly marked out what it does what its function is and the location so for example uh, if we select heating on which is terminal four there we all we have to look is along here where does it say heating on and it says number nine so four goes to nine and off we go again and then we put the links in as and when so the only thing that uh, i found missing here was was a piece of paper instructions I, um, I don't know if it was just this one or something or I've lost it. I, I, um, I don't know if it was just this one or something or I've lost it. I don't know. But I would have thought a piece of paper in here uh, for, to explain the different types of Drayton room thermostats or cylinder stats or smart controls, there would have been a, a slightly, well, a leaflet a little bit richer to, to promote the other products. And especially if we're going from um, mains uh thermostat 230 volts into digital into smart it would have been nice to do that so uh, overall very pleased the Danfoss wiring center we can see here uh, we've got plenty of room large bigger than the Honeywell one so it makes life a lot easier so if we look along the bottom we've got our cables to come in at the bottom with a packet of cable saddles to go across the top we've got uh, rear entry as well and also if you look we've got two holes here which coincide with a double patris surface mounted so that can go on here where we can loop extra lengths of wire uh, and then bring them through from the front to go into the various terminals so starting from the bottom we've got six earth six neutral and then one live is linked to 11 and what i would suggest you do is to get a link from 11 to one because if we want to put frost that into here it's going to need a permanent live well you've got enough room at 11 you've got enough room here but there's nothing wrong with say adding another live on the top uh, and the same here if we go on to uh, wireless or smart they want a permanent neutral and a permanent live so therefore having a spare one over here could be quite handy in that respect so we've got links across the top and um, apart from that absolutely brilliant now with that also uh, on the lid we've got our same um, sticky label so we can see exactly what uh, wire goes where and the function of it is so you can do y plans or s plans in here you just add in the links as as marked which is supplied so nice and easy and clear so we when we look at our programmer heating on terminal four well then you look along here where it says heating on and it's number nine so there we are that four goes to number nine and then off we go again um so very very easy but we also get in the book um in in the box is our wiring so we've got y plans and s plans with the variations and then we've got our three zones or or, or extra ones so we've got nice simple drawing so this is the uh, the first one that we've seen with a proper leaflet inside it so overall um all i can say is top marks 10 out of 10 with a gold star because there's everything here that you want uh, it doesn't matter if you're not very good at wiring or not very confident with this and the leaflet uh, you will be because it's all explained beautifully so um, Dan Foss um, highly recommended no problems at all I'd like to just go back a little bit on the the wiring centers and as you can see here somebody has wired this up so on our Thursday wiring course installers electricians who have never wired up at all they're frightened of it and um, they lack confidence 
a couple of hours of theory in the morning and we explain the sequences because obviously there is a definite sequence of wiring but also which component does what and which wire goes from A to B to C to D to finally do this. So somebody came here on Thursday, wired this up correctly, tested it out correctly, and it was all done under one hour. So if you'd like to come on a course and add this to your portfolio and your talents, you're more than welcome. Have a look at our website, mrcombi.com, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel as well. Just to recap the wiring centers, uh, we've got here our uh, Drayton one. So we've got six earth neutrals and all the lives. And there's a packet of links to change this from Y plan to S plan or whatever else you're doing. Then we've got the Honeywell wiring center, which is the recommended one for this because it's one socket for one wire. So you can do Y plan or S plan in here. So if you do lack confidence, then this is the one that you always choose because really I wouldn't thought you could possibly go wrong. But there is a method in this, there is a sequence in this, which we will tell you and show you. Next on the line that we saw was this uh, Salis one, which I love the size. I like big. Uh, so I've got my neutrals, my earths, and again, the same sort of barrier strip across the top with the links that we can put in and out depending whether we do a Y plan or an S plan. Then we've got our winner Danfoss, which is the same as the uh, Drayton valve that we got six earth six neutrals and all our live connections here with an extra packet of links so we can put them in as necessary depending if we're doing Y plan or S plan or three zones whatever this came out tops simply because it's easy and more importantly the instruction leaflet that came with it was absolutely brilliant over the top uh, for all the different plans so that's why uh, the Danfoss one came out best uh, finally, we've got our um, Wago, which I love the concept. I think this is brilliant. But looking at it, as I said, it's small and challenging. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this one and put this in its place and then wire it up according to their instructions. So um, I'll do a close up. You can see the this is the existing one and then with this in its place and I'll do sort of updates as well. So let's enjoy ourselves. So as you can see, I've completed the uh, transition from connectors to this uh, way go one thing i did notice that you just have to use the wires themselves no adapters will fit which is fine we don't have to buy them and the other thing i noticed was just simply the earth from here and the other zone valve don't show up on the drawing so if you do follow this drawing all you need to do is what i've done is join them together with a connector and then go one into the earth where all the other ones are the other connectors is simply because these wires weren't designed for that. In the normal world, they go straight into the connector block. So, um, as I thought, a nice, easy way of doing it, uh, except you do have to sort of sort of weave a little bit. Sometimes go underneath the wire, some go on top, even though you're wiring in a particular sequence, um, which is written down in the instructions. So um, it's well worth doing, and I think what I'll do is I'll rewire this a little bit better and leave it for the next course so the engineers can practice using this Wago one uh, as, as, as well as that. And um, as I said, the instructions here are a little bit on the basic side. There's a lot about uh, charity work which I can't understand what that's doing here and on the back they're, they're advertising it's good for the DIY market um, I don't think that's right at all we should not be encouraging uh, DIY people to do this sort of work you need to come on a course and a recognized course to actually do the job correctly because otherwise serious damage can occur in the house wiring center but um, there we are there's the Wago one and all works well and then now we're going to move over to the conclusion. So my final thoughts on uh, all these um, wiring centers, uh, we'll start from the, the smallest and we'll build up to these as well. So the Honeywell, the Mark II, um, I wouldn't use. There's no drawing, as you can see here. Um, so therefore, it's liable for mistakes. And anyone who's good at um, wiring, fault finding, 
um, who's been on a course uh, will find lots and lots of mistakes in here. Um, so therefore, uh, we will never be out of work. Um, so not really, junction box and that's it. The Wago has a very good instructions. It gives you a clear indicator which wire goes where, except as, do you remember we said, there's a couple of emissions about the earth wire to the motorized valve that seems to disappear but we can get over that but i love the concept uh, if you are in store in honeywell i would just go for this wiring center it's absolutely brilliant foolproof easy instructions to read on the lid what more do you need that's for honeywell absolutely brilliant uh, salus again absolutely massive so if you're installing salus controls um, you've got a nice simple drawing here and then you've got the other drawing there y plan and s plan uh, and then you can also use this uh, to rewire other people's um, then we've got the drayton and the uh, the danfoss so the drayton in the pack you get a very good book here uh, on on there and you've got the different plans and the wiring etc so, so um, there's a lot of thought gone into this one by mr drayton which uh, we appreciate absolutely brilliant the same junction box we've got from danfoss except that here we've got a much larger more comprehensive uh, drawing for all their other products which is why uh, in my opinion if you're installing danfoss use the danfoss wiring center and nothing else if you're rewiring a spaghetti junction and the right mess then danfoss drayton or salus would be your way forward because these will flex into anything at all so it's dead easy especially here where you've got lots of earths here lots of neutrals lots of earths lots of neutrals lots of earths lots of neutrals makes life a simple installation and most of all because we have such a huge demand on breakdowns systems out of control and then we're adding another zone frost protection here we can do that without the slightest problem you can't add anything to this one at all and you can't add anything to um, the Wago, and you definitely don't want to be wiring extra stuff into here because that is really advanced and you need to be extremely good at this one so um, that's my conclusion um, that's my top uh, these two are second for installations uh, if you're Honeywell as I said recap only buy this don't buy anything else at all for Honeywell uh, this is bulletproof and designed to be that way so I hope you've enjoyed the videos and um, don't forget to subscribe down to the bottom somewhere uh, to our YouTube channel and if you'd like to learn all about these wiring centers and how to wire them up it, it, and give you that confidence that we will do that for you here just get in touch on the website mrcombi.com